One of the fun things that is part of what I do in working with leaders uh, in all kinds of fields is the uh, privilege and the joy of working with athletes and coaches either in the collegiate realm or in the professional realm. And I'm often asked by people, you've had the opportunity to work with some pretty great coaches. And how would you define uh, the characteristics that stand out among great coaches that it's a, it's a common trend with them? And so I pondered that a bit, and, and there, are, there are three things that, that leap out. Obviously, before any of those three, um, these champion coaches uh, always had uh, a stable of talent to work with. But the talent alone was never enough to help them achieve their aims and to help them achieve their goals. There are three things that, that, that I saw over and over with some of the, the great coaches that I've had an opportunity to work with. Um, number one is that these coaches had the ability to cast purpose with their players with clarity and consistency to the point that they could take 50, 70, 90 players all who had different ambitions, came from different experiences, had different hopes and dreams, different ways of doing things, and somehow could take all of that collection of individuality and all those egos and somehow weld them into a group of, of men who were absolutely one with each other and one with a common purpose. You know, sometimes as, as leaders, we think um, our role is to do everything. I would suggest that one of the most important things that a leader can do is cast direction in terms of where we're going and cast purpose in terms of why we're doing what we're doing. And sometimes when you're dealing with um, a disparate group of people, that they're easily almost torn and, and the team is possibly becoming fractured. I've seen over and over again that the coach uses the purpose, what we're about, why we're doing this, as that all-powerful means to pull them back on task and to keep them marching forward in a single entity. I think a second thing that I've seen with great coaches and and it's applicable into the leadership realm in all fields, is that the great coaches that I've had an opportunity to work with, they simply love their players. It wasn't about them, it was about their players. Uh, they, they poured themselves in to the players' dreams. They, they pushed their players to be better than the players thought that they could be. They often had more belief in the player that the play, than the player had in themselves and they weren't afraid uh, to push that player, to risk the player to get angry with them uh, or to get upset with them because their level of belief was so deep in that player uh, that they were willing to take that risk uh, to be uncomfortable uh, with that player. I, I think a third thing that, that I've seen uh, over and over with, with great coaches is not only a sense of casting purpose or vision, uh, not only a sense of being able to um, love their players, but the third is they're, they're coaches who are able to minimize distractions on their team. And one of the reasons why they're able to minimize distraction and keep their players on purpose is they've got as many personality issues in the locker room as any other team, but they have a culture that if there's going to be an issue, we're going to address it and we're gonna put it on the table, we're gonna deal with it, we're gonna deal with it when, when the issue's small before it gets large. I call that dealing with an issue when it's still a crumb on the plate before it becomes Thanksgiving dinner on the plate. And, and the great coaches, they're just not afraid to dive in, put the issue on the table, be direct, say guys, we got an issue, uh, and we're gonna talk about it. 
And anything that causes us to be off purpose, anything that's outside of our value system as a team, the way we operate, um, we're going to deal with it. No sacred cows. There's not going to be any prima donnas on our team. Everybody goes by the same rules, the same regulations, the same principles. And they're even able, I think that's the fourth thing, is that these great coaches, they don't tolerate sacred cows. The, the team is always the prize. It is the, the obsession. It's not the individual. And they're not afraid. If there's an individual that is a peak performer, but that individual is, is acting in a way that's undermining the culture of the team. Uh, that coach is not afraid to do, make that hard decision and sit that player or even eject that player from the team if it means uh, that protecting the culture of the team. I know a lot of leaders who don't have that kind of courage, but the great coaches I've seen over and over exhibit those four characteristics.